Splendid, what ho, marvellous. Jolly good, Pip Pip Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. And it's marvellous to be back in central London, isn't it again, Simon? Oh, it is indeed. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like these videos. And of course, uh, don't forget to order my book, uh, which I keep going on about. And um, today, we're going to wander around Knightsbridge, and we're going to start here, we're starting at sort of Hyde Park Corner, but then we're going to wander through Hyde Park a little bit, around to the left, down Knightsbridge, looping around and sort of ending up back somewhere around here. You'll see. Anyway, what are we waiting for, Simon? Let's go. Across the road here, at number 77, Knightsbridge, that used to be the Spaghetti House. That's where they had that famous siege in 1975. These gunmen broke in there, and then they claimed that it was a political statement they were making, and they were from the Black Liberation Front. But it went on for about six days, this siege, and it was one of the first incidents when, when they used um, fibre optic cables, you know, like in the movies. They send the fibre optic cables down and through and they, so they could see what was going on. So the main protagonist, uh, Franklin Davies, he demanded they let some of his associates out of prison, um, these guys from the Black Liberation Front, and he wanted an aircraft to take them all to the West Indies. But, you know, we've all seen Dog Day Afternoon. I mean, I think the police went, ah, sorry, mate, we, we've seen Dog Day Afternoon. This always ends badly for you guys. Um, but it turned out, actually, the guys he was demanding to be released from prison weren't even in prison. And uh, I think ultimately he ended up shooting himself in the stomach and getting sent to prison for 20 years. Oh, look, look at this. This is called the Park Tower Hotel here. I'm going to surprise you now and tell you that I actually don't entirely hate this building. I think it's all right. It's, it's, it's designed by a guy called Richard Seifert. Seifert? Seifert? Anyway, he's the guy who did the Centre Point Tower and a whole load of other towers that I don't like. He did, he did Euston Station, which I can't stand. Uh, Centre Point, which I'm not all that keen on. The Pirate Castle, he did that as well. You know the, uh, the canoeing yeah. place on Camden Lock? But, uh, you know, I don't particularly, I don't mind that one. It's owned by some incredibly rich billionaire company in the, the Middle East somewhere. Look at that building, it was built in Anno Ed V11 Reg Coronati, which means the, the year of King Edward VII's coronation, which must be 1902. The main thing I remember about that street, though, is uh, I met a very beautiful girl when I was uh, working at Hamley's, and uh, <laughs> she was called Sophie. And Sophie, who was French, worked for um, De Cléor. But she was a beautician there and she invited me round to her place once. I was so excited. I thought I was being invited round for some sort of romantic rendezvous. It was totally obvious I was into her. And I got there and then her boyfriend was there. Anyway, Sophie, Sophie, how ever will I forget you? Anyway, let's go there. Many days I remember Our whole life together Look. You got some of these mounting blocks. Do you do you require a block when you're mounting, Simon? Yes. Yeah, these are these are obviously for people to get onto their horse. You know, because they had these um, outside. These these are like the ones that the Duke of Wellington put outside his club, outside the Athenaeum. Points, points, points to me, because it's a metropolitan drinking fountain and cattle trough association horse trough. You can actually imagine horses using this because this is you, you often get horses coming along here. Yeah. But look, more points to me, more points to me. Look at that one over there, can you see it? It's a parish boundary marker down there. Let's go and have a look. Look, see? So there's two. This one says SMW, which must mean that is the parish in that direction of Westminster St. Margaret. St. Margaret, as in the, the, the church there outside Westminster Abbey, I imagine. Um, and this one, I don't know, it's all kind of rubbed off and I've been trying to find out, but I think it's probably Parish of Paddington. Who knows? But anyway, I get points nevertheless. I believe it was King George II who developed Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens. I think it was for Queen Caroline or something, I can't remember. I'd have to watch my Kensington Gardens episode, but that dirt track that we just crossed, it actually used to be called Rotten Row. It's, it was the old King's Road to Kensington, but then they built the new King's Road to Kensington, which is the tarmac one on the, on the far side. So they had two. This one was for the old horses and everything. But look, if you look over here, 
It's called Knightsbridge because this here is actually the River Westbourne. This, cut, this continues from the Serpentine, the Serpentine layer, it's part of the River Westbourne, it, and it, it curves around here, and then I think they culverted the, the river into a sewer. Um, some, probably when they were doing, well, sometime in the 1800s, I guess. But there was a bridge just there where we came across, and there was two knights were known to have fought a duel or something on that bridge, um, and that's why it's called Knight's Bridge. Yeah. We saw the River Westbourne in our video about Swiss Cottage. We saw it down the drain. Walking in Knight's Bridge, red two nights for the June. Now I'm fighting in my dreams to bridge that. What do you think of these buildings, Simon? Would you like to live there? I, I wouldn't mind. The number one Hyde Park, this is called. And, and back in 2007, a Qatari prince bought one of those for £100 million. It, it was the most expensive flat in the world, I think, at the time. I mean, they start at these days at something like £20 million. I don't know. Look, at least there's someone in that one. I mean, cause quite a lot of them are just like owned by offshore companies and stuff. Yeah, they don't even pay council tax. The, the, gov the government are really annoyed about it. Nice, muscular yeah. rub. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't have thought it to look at them that they were the most expensive in the world. Well, it was at one point. I don't know if it still is. To be honest, it looks like a sci-fi prison. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine Christopher Lambert in there. <laughs> they build prisons in all shapes and sizes, you know. <laughs> you know Mary Poppins, he says that. <laughs> I can't even do a Mary Poppins. I can't even do a Bert from Mary Poppins accent. Oh. Speaking of expensive stuff, Sama Halime, right? He's, no, he's known as the, um, the red carpet jeweler because he provides all the jewelry to people like Angelina Jolie and Elton John and all these stars and, uh, when they go to the Oscars. That is the most heavily fortified jeweler in London. They actually had a diamond ring in there, I think, that was worth something like 20 million pounds. <laughs> Look, behind me there, Harvey Nichols. Back in 1831, there was this terraced house on the corner there, and Benjamin Harvey he opened a draper's shop there. It was just a little shop, and then you know, gradually it got bigger and bigger, and um, he, he joined together with a silk merchant, someone married into the Nichols family, and they ended up opening up this massive shop there. They rebuilt it in 1889. It's now one of the most fancy shops. I mean, in absolute, absolutely fabulous. They're always shopping at, uh, shopping at Harvey Nick's Darling, Sweetie, Sweetie Darling. Do you remember 1996? Um, there was a player play for West Ham called Florin Radachayu. And um, I think he got a call from, um, on a match day from Harry Redknapp, you know, Harry, Harry Redknapp, the manager of West Ham at the time. He said, uh, hey, Florin, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're kicking off in about 10 minutes against Man U. Where are you? You haven't arrived yet. And he goes, oh, I'm just shopping in Harvey Nichols. Harvey Nichols. <laughs> I think they'd sold him a couple of weeks later. He totally didn't care. He was just like, yeah, well, I'm shopping, you know. It's really nice. You see, what I like about these buildings, so these old buildings, if you look up high there, it says HN in the actual brickwork. HN, Harvey Nichols. And that's really nice because quite often a nice big old grand building like that from the 19th century wouldn't still be used for its original purpose. But that one is, and it's still Harvey Nichols after all these days. Yes. So it's, we're on Sloan Street, but it's just so noisy. But what, they're doing all this road works. But what I like is, look, points. Look, they've re preserved the coal hole cover. I like that. They smashed everything else up, but they're keeping that. That's quite nice, that. I like to see. I like to see that. I don't usually do my shopping down here, Sloan Street. Is the, there's Bear Versace Dolce Gabbana down here, bruv. It's proper high-end Gucci and boutiques. I mean, quite a lot of the property around here is owned by the Cadogan Estate which is, I think, they're the second richest landowner in London after the Duke of Westminster. Back in the 18th century, Earl Cadogan married the daughter of Sir Hans Sloan, after whom Sloan Street is named. It's quite a handy way to get your hands on all their property, actually, because the Sloan family were really rich. He was the guy who had, like, 70,000 objects, which he ended up donating to the British Museum. Or, I mean, I think it was because of his collection, the British Museum started up, and the Natural History Museum, and a whole lot of other stuff. So Hans Sloan, so anyway, Cadogan married into that family or something, um, and, uh, and that's how they ended up owning all this property. Nice, nice if you can get it. That's why we're walking down Hans Street, Crescent, Hans Crescent, you see? Named after Sir Hans Sloan. 
Well, not with these ones here. This is number one, uh, Hans Crescent. May West lived, I think May West lived somewhere in the street. She's the one who said, um, too much of a good thing can be wonderful. You know, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm good, I'm very, very good. But when I'm bad, I'm better. <laughs> anyway, um, back in 2001, they were selling a bunch of the flats in here. I think they sold out in about like 90 minutes. <laughs> John Fashionu, you know, the, um, the footballer who used to present gladiators. Anyway, he wanted to buy one of these flats, so he, but he didn't want to queue up. So he paid a tramp to stand in the line all night to queue up so he could buy one of the flats. Meanwhile, poor fella, afterwards, he probably paid him off and he had to go off and, I don't know, sleep on a curb somewhere. Quite nice that, isn't it? Look, Handstown. Didn't realise it was called Handstown, 1819. So all this area known as Handstown. Named after Sir Hans Sloan. Now, Charles Henry Harrod, back in 1834, he opened a tea shop in Stepney. And then he moved here because of the Great Exhibitions in, 18, in 1849. So he started up in a, a little, very tiny little shop here. But then it just grew and grew and, and became bigger and bigger until um, around 1900, they built this massive thing now, which, which is actually the biggest department store in Britain, I think. They've got really beautiful lifts and escalators in there. And in fact, in 1898, they, they, this was the first place to have escalators in London. They had to offer women a glass of brandy at the top if they made it all the way to the top to try and settle their nerves on this sort of quite uh, fraught experience of taking the escalator. They've got a, a motto, it's omnia omnibus ubique, which means something like ev ev everything, everywhere, at ev any time or something. <laughs> but it means basically that you, could, you should be able to buy virtually anything here. Before the First World War, you can actually buy 100% cocaine in there. And then in the 60s, you could buy animals and stuff. One bloke even bought an elephant there which was, I think it was given to President Reagan eventually, actually. And the reason why they, they introduced these escalators, I think the owner didn't like the lift, but I love, I like the lifts in here. Sometimes when she's in pain She bought four grams of coke Fourth floor, women's sports, services, marriage, furnishings, cutlery, food, bed, cocaine, elephants, yachts, nursery, furniture, perhaps, always bones, skinny, contemporary, Oh, looks familiar. actually for a child, this car. It's only 66,000 pounds. We could fund, uh, go fund the jewels guys, <laughs> see if they can buy you one. I don't think I'd fit, I don't think I'd fit in. Yeah, that's the first It's quite a pity because I remember when we were young, my mum used to bring us here to the lovely Georgian restaurant upstairs where you had the man with the chef with the hat and, he, and, and he'd come and carve the beef for the chicken in front of you. But uh, they, they turned that into a tea room now. So we're now downstairs in what used to be, this used to be the butcher, didn't it? They start, I mean, because up here is where they used to have all the nice sort of salamis and the, the chickens and the peacocks and stuff hanging down, didn't they? Anyway. It's a rather beautiful room, so I'm going to get on with my dinner now. Let's have a look. <laughs> what are you eating, Julian? Baby chicken. I feel a bit bad. Apparently, it's um, it's it's, it's a real favourite here. Of course, it passed into the hands of Mohammed Al Fayed, who was the father of Dodi Fayed, who died in the car crash with Princess Diana. I think now it's been sold to some sovereign wealth fund in the Middle East. <laughs> cool. Look, the old uh, warehouses for Harrods across the road. They link. They've got tunnels, I think, that link from here under the road to Harrods, but uh, I believe now they are luxury flats. <laughs> he really means that. 
<laughs> they really are luxury. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> when two men for the Jew, they battled for you, and your heart was Here in Montpellier Square, there's lots, and in fact, all over this area, there's lots of these coal hole covers. But look over here, these particularly nice, these ones. Look, three of them, look. Haywards, Hayward Brothers, London, Borough. So Hayward Brothers, the brothers they were based in Borough. And um, they patented this kind of idea of having these glass bits. When the light shone through, it kind of refracted through a prism or something, and it, and it spread the light out in the room below, or in the, um, or in the well, probably coal hole below, I should think. Um, so you can see what you're shoveling. Huh? So you can see what you are shoveling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> private gardens, another private garden, uh, which none yeah. of us are allowed into, of course. You can't go in there. Nope, I can't. You're I am not, not allowed. You're not good enough. It's exclusive. <laughs> They're ashamed of theirs. They've, they've submitted them in. It's all right around here, isn't it, Simon? <laughs> not I mean, bad. Yeah. Could be worse. It's not a bad hood. It's a fortress inside. A fortress inside. I can see from that shop. It's a fortress. These are from 1830, these buildings. They used to be slums. Slums, they aren't. No, you're welcome to be in it. Yeah, come on. I bet they're not slums anymore, though. They're not slums anymore here. These, there used to be 30 of these around here. I assume. I don't think you live in a slum, do you? Yeah, I get this perfect good and ice cream. <laughs> And uh, we're not going as far as the uh, museums down there, the natural history and all that stuff. We've, uh, we've come here to Cottage Place. That's a rather nice statue, that, isn't it? Look at that, the return of the prodigal Charlie Maxey. So yes, th this is um, the old abandoned, now abandoned, Brompton Station. Because uh, when they did the Piccadilly line, originally it was the Great Northern Piccadilly and Brompton Railway. <laughs> we, saw, we saw it, they had, the, they had the sign, it said GNP and BR outside. Do you remember Holloway Road Station? We were trying to figure out what it meant, G GNP. Anyway, yeah, it was great, great Northern Piccadilly and Brompton Railway. But they built too many of these stations too close together, so they didn't really need quite a few of them. So this one, I mean, it's built in 1906, but it's got the typical Leslie Green uh, design there, that lovely, those lovely tiles you get on quite a few of these stations. So when they expanded Knightsbridge Station, they no longer really needed this one, and trains just ran through, and um, so in 1934, it uh, completely closed down, and they used it for, I think in the war, they used it for the uh, Royal Artillery's anti-aircraft operations room. But in 2014, it was sold again and came into the hands of a, a Ukrainian billionaire or something. I think his intention was to turn it into luxury flats. Well, I don't know if it is. I don't know. It doesn't look like luxury no, flats to me. All the things that you showed me. You taught me. So this is this is Holy Trinity Church, and um, it's a parish church, Church of England parish church. But what I really find interesting is you see over here, right, if we come around the side. This little statue of St. Francis of Assisi, this used to be a, a drop for spies, in the, for Soviet spies in the, during the uh, 60s and stuff, during the Cold War. That tree, I think it's that tree behind there, that's where these spies would come and drop stuff off. This, this, we know this because of Oleg Gorjevsky or something, he was like a double agent um, during the 60s. And they'd drop stuff off there, and then they'd go over to this uh, post, this, this lamppost up in South Audley Street or North Audley Street somewhere, and they'd, they'd put a mark on the, on, the, on the lamppost so that people would know that there was something that had been left for them over here. Yeah. Amazing, really. Is so there anything left there at the moment? Well, I don't you know. Think? It might just be. Uh, I sort of think there is something that's been left there, but uh, by a human. But I, I don't necessarily want to go too near it. <laughs> they used to go wandering around Harrods, apparently, sort of lo loads of times, go round and round to, to, to make sure they weren't being tailed. And then, yeah. if they were sure, they'd, they'd come down here. And in fact, there's another one, another one of their drops, I've just around the On your eyes, always singing and sad, and I will. Excellent. Right. 
It's more like it. Just in front of that um, Holy Trinity Church, which is a Church of England church, is this, um, well, it's called the London Oratory. It's absolutely massive. It's all thing you'd expect to find in Rome. Um, and now an oratory, I had to actually write this down, sorry, because uh, I don't know. an oratory is a group of Catholic priests and lay brothers who live together in a community bound together by no formal vows, but only with a bond of charity. <gasps> <laughs> anyway, it's, um, it's a sort of Roman Catholic place and honestly it is a astonishing inside. It feels like you really are in Italy or something. Um, but just inside the door there's another one of these drops for the, for the spies in the co Cold War. Just, just go and have a look. Uh, si, have you been in, Simon? I, I, I insist that you go in and have a look just to go and check it out because there's two pillars just to the left of the little statue commemorating the First World War in the oratory. It's incredible really. Just here on Yeoman Row, I just quite just wanted to quickly nip down here. It's just opposite the oratory, more or less. Uh, these used to be stables, but I like the way that you can see that upstairs used to be where like little fl apartments for where the grooms could stay. So upstairs, are these little cute doors leading to where the grooms could live, and then the stables down there next to it. You know, you've got these lovely artist studios all along there with these massive windows. Over there, actually, Egerton Crescent, that's supposed to be one of the most expensive roads in London. Just opposite Mortimer House here, which was built in 1868 for Edward Palmer, the governor of the Bank of England. I love the way they actually built these houses for a specific person in those days. It's so nice. And look at the details on it. Can you see up there? Look at those. It's got these lovely, like a bear or something. It's so nice. Who will buy this wonderful morning? Such a sky you never did see. And yes. I'm going to stand here well, until here you mention it. I'm going to stand here until you say it. Until you see it. Until you see it. I see it. <laughs> I see it before me. <laughs> a stink pipe there. Look at that. Wonderful. Behold points. Time for a poem by Little Lost Lou. Now is the time for your ultimate glory. The gauntlet has been thrown down. A post box, a stink pipe, an old coal hole cover are all jewels in London's old crown. There's nothing to win, it's all just for fun. So earn points and do not delay. Anything dated or Bowie related, we're all heroes just for one day. <laughs> anyway, yes, I love these old lampposts that they've got on it here in Eg Egerton Crescent. Look at this. And they've got, I mean, there's more points here too because they've got that uh, sign up there, Egerton Crescent SW. So you know that that's a really old sign because it doesn't have the number, just SW. I really like it when you find these old uh, pubs which still have the, 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 the name of the brewery on this. The Charrington's no longer exist, but uh, it's quite rare to find these ones. Good condition, that's like it. I have to say, I really love this Michelin building. Michelin? 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 I mean, the guys who made tyres. I mean, this was from 1911, but I mean, from 1900, they actually compiled the Michelin guidebooks. I think that's where Michelin stars came from for restaurants so that motorists who were going off around Europe could go and visit certain places in their cars. Then you'd get certain recommendations of uh, restaurant, you know, hotels to stay in. And, and on the side, it's really nice. They've got old sort of motoring heroes from the early 1900s. But now, of course, it has turned into a restaurant, which is rather lovely on the inside. And yeah, you've got two Michelin stars upstairs. Um, is, Michelin, is that the same Michelin as in Michelin star? It's the yeah. same thing, connected? Yeah, 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 it's the same company, so the Michelin tyre is the same as Michelin stars. Oh, nice. Uh, but, yeah, nobody ever achieved uh, stars in here, apart from uh, Claude Bozzi when he came over and took over here. And he had two stars since uh, seven years ago now. Fantastic. Here 
on Walton Street. It's a lovely building here. This, this was built in 1850 as a kind of schoolhouse. And actually, you know, this really annoys me. I mean, later on it became a magistrate's court. OK, fair enough. But, but it's still until recently said above the doors there, you see where it's black, it's got a little rectangle. It, it used to say boys and girls, you know, because it was a school. So you'd, you'd have the boys go in one way. And then they also had bars on the windows for, for when it was a magistrate's court. But anyway, whoever has now turned it into luxury flats has decided in their infinite wisdom to remove those lovely references to the past, which I think is a pity. But then again, maybe they don't. <laughs> and they're the ones who own it. The past that we had, I will keep spying on the past that we had. Look at these lovely little shutters they've put on these oval windows. Very nice. Yeah. And that clever, you know, in order to accommodate that oval window opening, they've got the bars that come out with us. <laughs> A lot of these buildings are all built around the end of the 19th century. We're just coming up to Lennox Gardens here. In the 1870s, this is where the MCC used to play their cricket. Like the, there was a whole cricket pitch here. It was all much more before they built all these houses. And the MCC, as in the Marylebone Cricket Club. W.G. Grace played here. He even holds the record for the highest score on this ground. Apparently there was an ice rink, which was quite close by, that were for, were, was specifically for women who had been presented at court. And, um, and so when they're playing cricket here, they'd, they'd be told to be take special care when playing a stroke to square leg. Don't hit the don't hit the ball too hard if you're hitting the ball to square leg, which is okay. square leg is is over there. <laughs> and so so it's a bit rubbish. You can imagine the Australians coming into bowl and you're like, oh, I say old chap, uh, I wanted to hit that for four, but uh, <laughs> I can't because there's an ice rink over there. So <laughs> anyway, they, they moved up to, uh, to St. John's Wood in 1886 and then they built over all this, um, except for that little square in the middle, another one of these secret gardens, which we're not allowed into. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, someone, it's uh, amazing to think that person sunbathing in there is uh, probably sitting on the exact point where someone hit a six or was hit in the box. <laughs> See these red brick houses here in uh, Pont Street. They're known as Pont Street Dutch style. If, uh, if you're interested, <laughs> just in case you cared. Yes, it was uh, all from the 1870s. But um, well, they, uh, they're, they're mentioned even in a poem by Sir John Betjeman, about which more later. Is it Queen Anne? Queen Anne style? I think they're called. Anyway, there a lot of them have these Dutch gables. What's a gable? The gable, is that bit? Is it the gables? Hello. Oh, well, thanks very much. What's a gable? A gable? Yeah. You taught me how to write poetry. Look over here on the corner of Pavilion Road is the Cadogan Hotel. And that's the one where Oscar Wilde was in 1895 when the police came to arrest him. And they actually gave him a head start. They actually gave him a little kind of a grace period in which to escape, but he just couldn't be bothered. He just said, no, no, I'm going to stay here and face the music. In fact, the whole thing is captured in this excellent poem by John Betjeman, who went to my school. I don't know if I mentioned that a hundred million times before. To right of him and before him, Pont Street did tower in her new-built red, as hard as the morning gaslight that shone on his unmade bed. A thump and a murmur of voices. Oh, why must they make such a din? As the door of the bedroom swung open and two plainclothes policemen came in. Mr. Wilde, we have come for to take you where felons and criminals dwell. We must ask you to leave with us quietly, for this is Cadogan Hotel. He rose and put down his yellow book. He staggered and terrible eyed. He brushed past the plants on the staircase and was helped to a hansom outside. The story of Oscar Wilde. It's very sad, isn't it, really? And off he went to prison. In Knightsbridge, we walked past the Cadogan Hotel. And you told me of the ballad, the ballad of Red. This is Pantechnicon. I mean, it's obviously some sort of restaurant now. They've got a roof terrace and everything. It's very posh. 
by the looks of things. But uh, back in like from about 1830, right up until the 1970s, I think, it was some sort of furniture warehouse, furniture removals or something like that. And to the extent, so pan technicon comes from Greek. Um, it means pan meaning all and techne meaning art, I think. So they had something to do with picture frames and furniture and anyway it was some sort of warehouse but um, they developed they were the first people to develop one of those modern removals vans so they had a horse obviously in those days but they had the, the flat that came out and it could, they could put loads of stuff into the back of these uh, heavy removals vans and so those removals vans became known as Pantechnicons for a while just just here on Kinnerton Street, see that lovely pub, the Nags Head? One of the smallest pubs in London. We're not going to go in because we're actually going to go to another pub around the corner. But um, it's really lovely in there. And I believe it's owned by Pogo Patterson's dad from Grange Hill. Do you remember, do you remember Grange Hill when we were young? I no, Pogo do, Patterson, yes, he was indeed, a friend, yes. of, a friend of um, Tucker Jenkins. Redhead. Yeah, I think he was a friend of Tucker Jenkins. The house directly opposite is the one where allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, you know, um, that photograph, the famous photo of Prince Andrew. Yeah, right. Prince Andrew with his arm around Virginia Dufresne. Right. They all went to court and everything. Allegedly, that's where that photograph was taken, that little house over there. Apparently, she said that she had been to a, a nightclub with him and he was raining sweat over her. And he said, oh, well, actually, that's, uh, that's, that's impossible because I don't sweat. Do you remember? He said, I don't sweat. Um, and so anyway, that's, that, that's allegedly where it took place, where it is claimed, just in case my, the lawyers come after me. <laughs> Where were you, Simon? Where were you at the time? Oh, I was at a uh, straightforward shooting party. Oh, stra just a straightforward one? Just a straightforward Straightforward, one. Yeah. straightforward shooting party. Yes. I was going to go do that one of those myself. Look, you see, this used to be the old Hyde Park station. Back in the days when it only had lifts, that's uh, Hyde Park Corner Station was this one here. Um, but then they expanded, they decided to add escalators and they sort of opened up, all, it's all underneath the, the big roundabout there now. And so that just got turned into, I don't know, what is it, a, a restaurant or something now? The Wellesley. It's not a great view, is it? But I suppose if you're upstairs, you do get to see the park. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, if, if you're on the it's ground dark, level, dark, it's dark. no good. Not much yeah, good on the ground. No. It's a, really, it's a really cute little pub, this, the Grenadier. And it, it's, um, it was originally built, it built in 1720 as like the officer's mess. There was a barracks around the corner. Actually, if you look up on the ceiling inside, when we go in, you can see all this money and stuff on the ceiling. That's probably some playing cards and stuff up there. It's because there was this junior officer who was uh, caught cheating at cards and he was beaten to death, apparently. So his ghost still haunts the pub. Let's go for a drink. <laughs> Cheers, Simon. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like these videos and go over to my website, jewelsguys.com, where you can watch lots more videos and you can even buy my book, which is available. Um, yes, very highly recommended. Out now and available in all good shop bookshops and online. See you next time. Walking in a nice place